and fishing in general, we all think back to someone. Somebody's taught you something. You've not, you know, I don't know of anybody really that's a self-learned angler that just said, hey, I'm going to do this. You're few and far between if you are. Well, this week we are talking to one of the professors of surf fishing. That's right. We're going to be talking to Pompano Rich Vitalich. So strap in, everybody. It's going to be a great episode. I'm glad you're here. You're listening to Finding Demo Surf Fishing. It's time, and I'm excited, and I can't really hold it up, but that's right. This week, <laughs> we're talking to the Pompano Professor, Rich Vitalich. Rich, thanks for coming on, man. Thank you. It's certainly a pleasure to be on with you, Brian. Oh, I'm yeah. looking forward to this. <laughs> uh, I've got... I got energy left today. <laughs> yeah. Here, yeah! Here we both are at the end of our normal work days, like... I got a little bit left in the tank. I can do this. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. Yeah, man. Oh. Yeah. So um, for everybody listening, uh, if you haven't heard of Rich, you can definitely find him on his webpage, pompanorich.net. On Facebook, he's the Pompano Professor. And there is a page, if I'm not mistaken, because I know I'm a part of it, Pompano Professor is a group or is it a page, Rich? I can't remember. Uh, it's a page. Right. It's solely dedicated to what I do and uh, content that people can chat and they can ask questions. So they're asking very layman type questions and don't want to be exposed maybe in their own minds on regular Facebook and social media. It's not embarrassing. Of course, nothing's embarrassing. I actually share my phone number. Um, we do a lot of things on that. And it's uh, we had 3,300 uh, likes and a bunch of comments last month. I mean, it's been a wonderful page, yeah. and I'm very thankful to David Zuniga who crafted the whole thing, and he's a great marketing guy, and that was my minor in college, so. no, oh, well, I didn't know that. It's been funny. I've, I've learned more about you on other things that I, you know, we've talked numerous times uh, on other right. subjects, mostly fishing and then uh, uh, other mm-hmm. pieces there, and... I just found out on the Marine Corps birthday on November 10th, you were a fellow Marine. And I was like, well, right. that explains why we like each other so much. So fine there. That's perfect. That's, <laughs> it is perfect. It is perfect. And yes. I, and I didn't know Thank that you, you minored in, I didn't know you minored in that in college. So the, look at it. Yeah, this. actually, I also majored in computer sciences. I was in data processing. I wanted to be a systems analyst because I wanted to be a Marine biologist, but at 13000 a year in 1969, I said, wow, that's not too cool. No. So uh, data processing was the IBM 360. It was literally the size of a 12 by 12 room, and it had 38-pound magnetic disk. You had to be a man to be in the field. Uh, and it only had 64K. So there you go. 64K. Yeah. <laughs> IBM 360, the forerunner. Wow. So you're saying that, I remember my first Macintosh. I remember we had to get an external hard drive that had, I think it was three megabytes, and it was like, ooh, uh, we've got storage. Ooh. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Yes. Definitely. And now, yeah. now here we are, like, um, how many terabytes is that on that thumb drive? Uh, three. Okay, I could use that. <laughs> terabytes. <laughs> Technology. <laughs> how amazing how it works as we... All right, so let's... Are... Go ahead. Go ahead. No, you first. No. My, uh, yeah, like, when I first started fishing commercially, or learning, well, I, learned, I started in 58, but our first tech savvy experience between the three of us that scoured the area because we were meat fishermen were just walkie talkies with a five mile range um that was that was the way we got around that way we can put each other on fish but you go ahead i'm ready now 
<laughs> no, we're going down that path. <laughs> I can get back to my questions. What? I got a page of those. <laughs> oh, man. The walkie-talkies, five-mile range. I mean, so the, the ancient way of text messaging was that way. And right. I guess, the, so you guys also had the channels, too, so you could kind of play it and keep it a little bit quiet without people finding out. But, um, no, Nobody, first of all, the Pompano commercial guys wouldn't spring for that. Um, even though a good one was forty, fifty dollars, um, and we hid them. We would turn sideways or go up in the berm. They didn't know that we were talking. They often wondered why my partner Jeff and Wendy Jim from Wisconsin, why aren't they fishing together when we heard they caught sixty fish yesterday? Well, we knew that the winds had changed and that the murkier, turbid water that was appropriate for our beaches had shifted and was starting to settle. So we had to expand our horizons and it was four of us and we covered the whole Hutchinson Island, which is basically 20 miles. So yeah, even even when we put clams on, we turned sideways away from everybody. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh yeah, yeah. Hey, yeah. you gotta do what you gotta do to get the job done. I mean, commercial life is a whole, I mean, that, that that's livelihood right there. Yeah. So it makes sense. Right. All right. So That's right. you nailed a good one there. So started, you know, we're talking about the 50s there. Uh, <clears throat> you've been fishing a long time. We know that. Um, how did yeah. you really start fishing? Well, we, I was born in, in Long Island. We stayed till I was 10 and we started fishing with hand lines. We never knew what a rod was. And we basically fished with squid for a fluke and flounder. And we busted the ice behind a hospital to find clams and salt water near uh, Jones Beach or Fire Island area. Um, and uh, we ate porgies, we ate sea robins, we ate toadies, we ate everything. My parents are from Trieste and they could cook everything. We didn't know anything about toxicity, but we lived. I didn't know you could <laughs> eat. I didn't know you could eat a sea robin. I've caught so many of those things in the last month. Huh. Who would have thunk? Well, the meat is very white. I mean, you just cut the head off. And uh, mom would make these northern Italian uh, tomato type, not thick, you know, supa type things. And uh, she'd cook them in that for hours. And uh, they were delicious. Loved, loved sea robins for sure. Yeah. Fine. I'll keep them from now on. Uh, I'm, I'm, I'm gonna have like to. Him. I mean, well, I've already got myself in trouble. Uh, last episode, I uh, <laughs> I, uh, I said if I caught a 12 inch <laughs> catfish, I would keep it and I would eat it. And uh, I completely forgot about it. And then uh, I think it was Mike from Smitty uh, said, "Hey, uh, you remember that thing you said about uh, yeah. catfish?" Like, no, I don't know. You talk. Oh, I did say that. Uh. <laughs> so I know I'll, I'll be out fishing with Mike here soon. But I know now it's it, it's public knowledge. Everybody's going to remind me, like, "Do you eat a cat?" Yeah, I'm like I didn't catch one. Maybe. <laughs> <laughs> but since I'm always out with Justin, I know he's going to be like, oh, no, buddy. No, no, no. Justin Reed? <laughs> yeah. The Justin Reed? The yeah. Mr. Justin Reed. I can't wait. Yeah, I can't wait to get him on here. He's he's getting on, too, one of these days. He, you have so many great people, whether it's, uh, <laughs> is it Corey Dwyer? Dyer, um, yep. um, Salty, of course, and Brad, I mean, and um, Matthew Isbell. Dusty Hayes, it's on and on and on. Brock Myers, I've been with him for three years and selling their tackle shop. Just an amazing host of both shops and people. Your camaraderie over there is way past ours, but I have to tell you something. Two days ago on Saturday, there was uh, I started getting reports, are you on the beach? Uh, we're over here at Glasscock. Refuse, that's not a bad name, that's a true name. <laughs> Uh, <laughs> and uh, out of the 60 rods here, there's 55 of yours, and there's 22 people using fish gum, and we are annihilating Pompano, and they proceeded to catch 150 and had basically outfished the commercial guys who were still fishing the big stiffies, you know, the lammies. The uh, lammy glassers, yeah. Yeah. So, and that, I mean, after he and Tisha, they were casting 130. It wasn't even uncommon that most of them were capable of catching, getting out there to 110 to 130 yards through. Because I don't sell a fishing rod without demoing and teaching 
both conventional spinning I'm not crazy about, but I have to teach it. So all these guys from 11 year history of selling rods and reels were all on one beach. That's a lot of, that's a lot of experience in one line. <laughs> now listen to this. The ambassador of fish gum is the river keeper. 30 years, environmental guy, Mike Connors as uh, is, is our ambassador. He is a guide for 32 years on the estuary. He does fly fishing for Pompano. Could not get a spot. He said, he called me, he said, hey, would you call Kenny Din and ask him to move? He's <laughs> got his six. <laughs> oh, I that's said, funny. are you at the secret spot? And he called me a name and he said, you didn't tell me there was a bite on? No. I said, no. I said, I have 568 numbers on the scroll. Come on, dude. Holy oh, cow. Oh, man, that's funny. <laughs> He's got it his is. six. Was... Come on, let me in. <laughs> well, he knew that. <laughs> he was asking, how many does Kenny have? How many? Hey, Mike, hey, Tisha, what, what do you guys got? We had 10. We got two to go. <sighs> and then the bite, and the bite stopped. The water got clear. On the high tide, every all the bites were on the very beginning of the lowest tide. That's a little different. Which has been very no, that's very common over here. Okay. Yeah, because the sharks don't venture over the second bar. Oh, that's right. I, I, okay. I and and if you one. got a swell, you can they 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 kind of lock out, and so that early thing is a ladyfish fiasco for thirty minutes because they're hungry, quick, and over and done. And luckily, there was no bluefish or mackerel in the area. It was all popping. It was pretty cool. That sounds like a fun day. Oh, yeah. yeah, it's, yeah. It, it is interesting to see, you know, with the old school guys using lammies and, you know, with all the new rod mm -hmm. technology out there, you know, the daggers, OTBs, uh, surf casters, yeah. all that. It, it You know, you, I understand lammies were really the way to go, but with the way technology has changed, you don't need lammies anymore. You know, some, I mean, I've seen a, a perfect example right. is Justin. You know, he takes his nine-foot uh, runner, and he can sure. launch his nine-foot runner further than several people I know with 12-foots. So it's sure. like, you know, it, it's all technique and knowing, you know, what, what's, what's the preload, what, what pushes those pieces. And exactly. if you know how you're set up and all that, you're, you're going to be, you're going to get some distance. So. I, I think an important and integral part to that process is not mixing and matching rods. Yeah. I, I mean, keeping the same brand that they all load the same, uh, you put three or four different brands in different lengths, um, unless you're going to fish each one a different location or, um, you know, depth or how further or whatever. Um, you can do that with three or four or even just two really nice rods. And, you know, I think, I think, you know, bite detection is everything to me, you know, and uh, right. of course, understanding the quality of the water and how to fish where you're fishing. And a lot of people don't realize the strategy of commercial guys is that, okay, I fished the high tide beach on the early dim light, right? And it let out a couple hours, and uh, the bite was it diminished, and everybody goes home. Um, no, we moved to areas two or three miles south of certain inlets that the first three miles are completely eroded. They may have a 2,000. You don't have this over there. A 2,000-foot jetty like Fort Pierce does. And that creates huge erosion. That beach gets $8 million of sand every year and a half for 10 years. Um, and it carves out channels and all kinds of things and exposes reefs. And you catch muttons and fish you don't catch. So we can fish low tide. We can fish pretty much all day dependent on the moon phase. Yeah, the moon phase is a big one for playing tactical. Ugh. Very much so. I'm not. I'm. I know people are like, "Oh, you're crazy." I, I hate fishing full moon, but that's just me. For me, for some reason, full moon and I, we just don't get along. We're not friends. <laughs> I, just, I, um, I can't do it. But I, I, I 100% agree with you. The only time I would disagree is if you had. We're always three days before the full is the best. Yeah. Um, right. And then it takes sometimes five to ten days on the dark side of the moon. But if you have three days of like a really cloudy and a really rainy night, that moon could pop up. Ah, I remember scoring heavy numbers on the moon popping up at like 2 p.m., 90 miles from home, and 20 minutes later, the bite was on fire. 
Yeah. You know. It's the night so. one that gets me. I mean, I, if I know I'm going out and I know that the moon rise is going to be, you know, anywhere yeah, between but, 2 or 3 o'clock and I know it's going to be up all night, I know the fish are eating all night, so I'm I'm already like, all right. I'm going to be fighting yeah. them being full. I have to play I have to play my game a little bit different in in how I'm going to seek them because if they're not, you know, they're not going to eat if they're not hungry. Yeah, uh, and wow, you, you it's got, the same trade with dolphin and all the offshore fish too. Yeah. Right? yeah. Yep. Absolutely. So it, it's definitely another tactical piece. Uh, so, all right, let's move into this one. Uh, you've seen a lot of changes in, uh, in the fishing industry. You, you've told me that numerous times mm-hmm. as we've talked uh, in the past. What do you right. think about the, the surge in people coming to surf fishing from other da- avenues of fishing? Oh, I think it's great. I mean, uh, our small business guys and the the guys that are popping up that can serve these people and also you know boats are expensive insurance expensive dockage is expensive dry storage is expensive you're not even a middle-income guy that can afford to have a guy to go offshore let's 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 face it i mean this the advent of all of the kayaking and some of the crazy stuff you guys do over there with brock and them the kayak and catch king mackerel that's really nuts. Um, we don't have anything like that here. Um, cause we have onshore winds and they come up very rapidly in Atlantic, you know, completely different dynamic. Yeah, um, your surge has a tendency to get a little bit more extreme than ours. We know if ours is, we're going to have weather. We know we're going to have it in the Gulf, but y- yeah, you yeah. guys have a whole different ball game over there. Well, you got some good back country too. Uh, I've seen my guys, Dave Farrell, cap, cap, well, he's Captain Dave Farrell. He, he does Florida Insider reports with uh, Rick Murphy and he's taking my jigs and stuff and put them on TV, blah, blah, blah. Um, Florida Insider, but he's gone over to Panama City and some inside water and bag two bag, bag limits with another famous guide. And it, it, to me, it's pretty cool. A guy can drive from Palm Coast, the east coast of Florida, straight across the state, guy that he's fishing with knows that back country, and they score first day. Come on. That's serious. <laughs> That's serious. Yeah. And come back that night. Oh, man. That's, I know. Well, fine, fine. Be excellent people. <laughs> <laughs> That's why they're pros. You know, That's why they're world-renowned. Well, there's some pros that are not like that. They 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 do copy or go with guides before they do their TV show instead of and people that have been on TV 20, 30 years. We have them over here, and uh, the guides and them yell at them. And I'm not gonna name names, obviously, but you know, it gets a little twisted on these guys. But to be an insured guide and not have a boat. Or an angler on foot is a real cool thing because you got to learn a lot of stuff. Yeah, you know? absolutely. So, speaking of that, what brought you to the surf? Um, let's see. My dad was a straight meat uh, mullet fisherman, and we fished bluefish and more bluefish. <laughs> <Mackerel. Yeah. laughs> That's that whole new Glass northeast. Minnow, <laughs> Yeah, chumming. We had a we had a junker of a boat in this and that. Um, uh, basically, I went to the beach in '59. I saw and, and Pompano professor, the Pompano professor. They named me, by the way, Florida sport fishing. I had written so, so, several articles, and uh, in '59, I met this guy built like Tarzan, named uh, Dave Platts. David. P-L-A-T-Z, was in Florida Sportsman Magazine, at least 20 to 30 mentions and paragraphs. And uh, he was 6'8". He was throwing out uh, wooden rods. So that's... And, and uh, I, I saw that the, there was like six guys from middle school and high school, and, and they were baiting up. There was no rake. They basically just took their hands, and he, he saw the size of my hands. I became a human rake. Uh, (laughs) I was much needed. (laughs) So, so, uh, he did all the casting. He fished 25 rods, the only uh, adult on the beach. 
he sold beach insurance. So later in life, he got the same prime places that I savored for for 40 years on Jupiter Island near the multimillionaires or some billionaires. And so when everybody's catching, not catching, him and his partners will put up 90. And he he was he's still alive. I mean, he's 94. And uh, I wrote part of my column in tribute to him and what I learned from him. And actually, what I learned from him led to understanding, uh, reading the ocean and um, the aggregate back then versus now with the replenishment sand all kind of, we had coquina in jupiter we oh. haven't seen that for 50 years we had clams in the river we had live oysters he would use uh, when it came to alternative base he would use brine muscle um we shot clams sand fleas was always the deal um it, it was funny he 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 was blanching fleas in 1959 and I said, why are we doing this? And he says, they like pink. This water de- this water derives pink. Said, oh. He says, we don't. It's not Blanche. It's the, we call them cookies. And that was the, <laughs> they do. They they did. Any old guy you meet. Did you use cookies? <laughs> <laughs> when they come down to be downtrodden and they hadn't caught squat. Oh, I had live fleas. Well, we, they, didn't, they didn't want that. They, they wanted cookies. Huh. Um. You, are you fishing, Blanche? I said, we can't tell where you're fishing with. You've got how many fish? I said, Jeff, how many we got? 14? He says, you've been up to the truck twice with three seven-gallon buckets. And I said, oh, we, no wonder we're exhausted. Um, <laughs> we're using a piece of clam, a Blanche flea, and a half inch of fish bites with these big floats and 20-pound floral. What? There's three miles of rods here. I said, yeah, so that's pretty cool, isn't it? Yeah, it <laughs> what is. What do you say? <laughs> no, I, I didn't mean it that way, but you know what I mean. Yeah, I know what you, you mean. Know? But, I mean, you, so we that was kind of cool. So on, on one hook, you guys stacked, you stacked the deck, though. I mean, you had fish bites with yeah. some clam and, and the, the blanched flea. That's Oh, you had to. What else could you do? That's smart. I mean, I've, I've seen some people... Um, uh, mm-hmm. I can't remember why I don't Kelly uh, was doing it in up in Jack's. Uh, it was one thing he showed me. Kelly Munson, uh, he was yeah, make, yeah, yeah. he was making a. It was almost like a hamburger. So he had fish gum. <laughs> he had fish gum, and right. then he had I think it was shrimp, and then he right. had I think he had either had another piece of fish gum or he had a fish bite, and then he wrapped it all up with a string and uh, and put it together. Wow. And he showed me. And I was like, well, that's really smart. And sure. then all of a sudden, after he showed me that, I started seeing other people doing these things. I'm like, all right, apparently my bait game sucks. I, I need to do this, <laughs> this triple bait thing. Um, but it was great because it was like, you know, and uh, I can't remember where Kelly had told me he'd uh, he'd learned it. Um, but I, I started right. seeing it more and more after I, I saw it from him. I, I started noticing more anglers were definitely uh, putting more on the hook, you know, using two aughts yes. to get a little bit more space. But uh, it, yeah. it was smart. And then I can see from where you're saying from back then, stacking it like that, I mean, it's two happy things right there. You got the clam and the the blanched sleeve with the color and the smell. And then you still throw on yeah. a synthetic and you're, you're you're really set. So, And the, the really cool part was done dim light. The first two hours they would hit um, white floats. And it was always big floats because of the numerous, numerous calico crabs and bait pickers. And then, like, at noon, when the tide started coming back in again, and there was a change in the angle of repose of the sun, et cetera, et cetera, they smeared yellow. Um, and it was truly a yellow, not a chartreuse green or whatever you want to call it. Um, we use pieces of heating pads, um, the rubber mats for YMCA, <laughs> <You're locking. laughs> nice. we yeah but uh predominantly floats we learned in, in the 50s and 60s well i learned that we were using i believe they're called the bets or maps they're you know the beer can float the yellow mm-hmm. chartreuse that you see with the bead i don't know well we used the inch and a quarter the whole float and we drilled out the hole at the end and put a three-odd uh, kale hook in there and hot melted some glue around it. It was stationary. 
and what what I learned is that a float is not just to float it. It was it was to and attract it. It was to jig with the waves. So I always called my floats uh, buoyant jig floats, not just floats. They were imperative. And but the problem with having that float attached to the hook is you hooked a lot of them in the wrong places. <laughs> oh, oh no. <laughs> Well, not that bad. I mean, on the facial aspects, you know. Right, but not the not the perfect, you know, side mouth or bottom jaw hit. You're you you were getting a little yeah. out of the box. You get that. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, that yeah. that brings me into this really. Um, I'll move into the other question I was going to tell you, but we'll, let's move into this one. So, with everything that you've done, what got you to transition into the tackle game? Um. Well, I first changed to get well. We were so good on the beach that I decided that I'd do uh, charters, beach charters, uh, 12 years ago. And people would come down from condos that had no experience, and I'd let them pull in fish, even if it was conventional. And you met pastors and all kinds of people from all over the United States. And some of them eventually said we'd like rods. And that's another story, but um, that's pretty much it. When you're up there and you're getting it done well all of us are getting it done but you're the guy that's generous enough to convey why we're getting it done how we're getting it done and what we're using to get it done that's very appealing to people because they're afraid to talk to these gruffy guys that are commercial guys or all this secretive trade and blah 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 you know what i'm saying yeah i understand that so so if i'm hearing you right then (laughs) <laughs> my sales pitch there uh let's make sure i heard you correctly <laughs> um, so w- with yeah. everyone you were fishing with you know you, you saw a need in the market and you and yeah you I filled did. it you filled the need yeah um and what helped progress it is that i started making a name for myself and i was writing for um a little 26 page news magazine called the hope sound currents and she reached out and Barbara Cloudis instead. Um, actually, she didn't reach out. A really good legendary Pompano guy called me, Jack Caracusa, and he says, hey, you you like to write? I said, yeah. He says, well, Barbara Cloudis' um, brother is on his deathbed, and he's always wanted to write a Pompano reporter column. So... Uh, I became that guy, and oh, Barbara wow. and I worked together for eight years. And from that, um, Captain George Labonte, who is does the new boat show TV show for Florida Sportsman, designed all my shirts uh, in barter for Pompano. Um, called me one day and said, "We got a spot for you uh, on ESPN. Do you want to?" He said. You told me years ago you always wanted to be a DJ. Well, <laughs> here you go, old man. <laughs> Just a little different, but, you know, same thing. Same, same. Yeah, yeah. So I worked. I, I did that. And I didn't want to do studio, okay? Because then you had to listen to the offshore guy, and you'd interview very famous people and guides and charter captains offshore live. I wanted to go to the beach, and I did that. They said, get out of here. Yeah. Go to the beach, go to the pier, find where the action is, call us, and give us your anticipated what's going to happen, blah, blah, blah. So that's that got me in that, and then they started letting me talk about um, my charters, and then I started r- raking fleas for a living. And in 2006, there was a need for Sputnik sinkers. I didn't make them, but I... Uh, the guy that was selling it was a commercial guy, and he was selling them out of these five gallon buckets for a buck seventy five. I said, Ward, that's too much money. And he said, he said What are you going to do? <laughs> I said, I said give, give me the molds. You're getting old. <laughs> <laughs> so he said, I'm not giving you the molds, but if you want to come over here after fishing and make them, he says, You're going to have them for 75 cents. Sold. Said, Fine. <laughs> That was it. So I was making, and by 2010, I thought, 
um, I started finding out that I was going to have to go to UK to get a mold. So that was 12 years ago. And then I started carrying boxes and boxes of, of, of Sputniks in the back of my truck. And when I came off the beach, little, people would know I was coming in advance and I'd go home. So that way, if I didn't make any money, I made money. <laughs> right. <laughs> That's one way to make sure it's done. And she done. said, you made $350? Yeah, on sinkers. She said, I don't want you doing that. So What? Oh, okay. I mean. Uh, well, you know. I get it. So, yeah. And then, let's see. From the, that, the Blanche Fleas, I, then I picked up Juno Bay Tuppins, which is a 90-year-old tackle shop. And I did my first Florida Sportsman show. Um, spent 500 for a booth. Tommy Farmer. Um, actually he cut it in half and I displayed his graphite rods for the first time ever in Florida, a Carolina pro series. That was 2012. That's not a big name. It's, no, Tommy Farmer. That's not a big name at all. <laughs> it's not a big name. 28 inch <laughs> neck. <laughs> Fire hydrants for legs. Yeah. Are you kidding me? Yeah. I was going to say, I'm like, mm. yeah. if you guys haven't heard of Tommy Farmer, just all you got to do is Google him. The, yeah, he invited me up. Oh my God, he uh, he called me out of the blue, and he said my wife uh, Kim read an article in Hope Sound Currents by Barbara Cloudus, and you're the you do a full page in there, and you did a beautiful article about autistic kids and pictures with Pompano and teaching them, helping their fathers, you know, and so on and so forth and she was so touched by it that she had it without anybody's permission and we put it into the wilmington news and i'm calling you because i heard through the grapevine that you're a surf fisherman i need a salesman wow and that's how that started nice i said so i went to his house 1300 miles wow man i'm at tommy farmer field <laughs> which was the wilmington international airport I didn't even see a plane. <laughs> Nothing. Was this house I thought it was a military, a future military site with wavy Kentucky blue grass and this little sign, you cannot go here, it's Tommy Farmer Field. <laughs> and here's this guy, and he is big. <laughs> oh, man. <laughs> yep. And he said, what's with the open toe sneaker? I said, Oh, I have a second degree burn on my little toe. The smelter pot blew up a week before I got here. <laughs> <laughs> I know I'm wickedly everywhere. So no, you're fine. Said, how you... It flows nicely. Yeah, so that's how I learned how to cast. And uh, every cast we made, we had to go out there or and get it. It was had been raining a lot, and uh, he said. You, you, I know you can do better. I said, yeah, but then I'd have to walk further. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and you know, the, and, and that's just how it, it's funny because we were just, Mike and I, Mike, actually Mike, Justin and I were just talking about that. We're like, yeah, it's great to cast it out there. But God, does yes. it suck reeling it in? It's so far out there. <laughs> well, this picture conventional, Akios oh. or Abu, 5 to 5.2 to 1. Are you kidding? <laughs> oh, man. It's taking forever. <laughs> and wow. don't forget, you got to pack the line. you got to have narrow the gap so it's thread to thread. You know the deal, right? You're filling in the shadows. Uh, and you're doing that while you're pulling in the fish. <laughs> <laughs> See, I'm cheating, yeah. though. I, I cheat with what mine. Better. I got that, what is it, that uh, that act, uh, the level wine. So I, I'm, I'm totally cheating still. Oh, yeah. oh, you should not have put that on air. That's like a spinning reel upside down. But that's okay because uh -uh. it's the one I won. <laughs> it's the one that I won in that contest. So I'm loving it. It's like, all right, this is oh. getting better. So I'm, uh, I'm learning still how to use these things and get better with them. I'm not amazing yet, but my cast has increased and all that stuff. But it's been from you know a lot of practice. I'm starting to learn makes makes perfect. And uh, so you have it on fun. minimum restriction to get the uh, the distance when you need it. Yeah, yeah. I dropped the magnet down to zero, and uh, I've loosened it up. Basically, it's been a stepping. You know, I, I've started with uh, when I first set it you up. You know what you're doing here mechanically in the long run, do you know? I'm setting myself up for a long cast? No, burning up the worm. <laughs> yeah. Well, there's that, too. <laughs> 
wasn't kidding. I was telling you. I believe truth. it. No, I, I believe it because I mean, I, I know I'm utilizing it all through, and I've, I've, I'm going to have to rip it apart, rock it, and all that stuff, and clean it, and, and learn this. But sure. I, yes. I had one. I bought a cheap one to start just to try it, and. I hated it. Mm-hmm. Like I, I, I have it in my garage still. And if, if for me, all I want to do is turn yeah. it into a 500 yard target. Um, <laughs> but since I got the Accios, it, it's made, uh, it, it's made me understand it a little bit better. I understand that, you know, the casting is different and the, the sure. you know, your, your functions are a little bit different, but it's, it's nice to, I, I guess, use something different to keep yourself fresh and keep learning because with so much gear out Absolutely. there, you, you never know what you're going to want to try to utilize. You know, if, if it's a spin, exactly. cool, it's all fine, but sometimes conventionally you got to get a little creative. You know, just a quick side note, you know, our famous Larry Fishman Finch out of Jacksonville yep. has Penn international five, uh, whatever, I forget the number. And people don't realize, you know, I mean, he has open face, but two of his favorite reels are level ones. <laughs> and yeah, well, I don't think he wants everybody to know. I mean, is there anybody listening? Too late. <laughs> <laughs> no, Larry. Larry is. I fished with him a hundred times. He's 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 he is a barnacle. He's the fiddler crab's brother. I mean, he's cool. Yeah, I anyway, enjoy talking with him. So, Eventually, I'm I'm going to find a way. I'm, I'm probably going to have to drive to Jacksonville to get him on, but I, I'm hoping I can because the last time I talked with him was at that tournament, uh, Roy's, and it was right. I was expecting him to be standoffish, uh, and he's been nothing but welcming in all his videos, but I was still kind of like, all right, it's another oh, yeah. guy that's probably going to want to punch me in the face for even talking to him. Uh, and But Larry, right. was he was amazing. He was just you know, very friendly, open, and, he's, and what he said really oh, slapped yeah. me in the head of like, all right, I need to think differently was he's like, I'm 70 something years old, man. Uh, I can't take this knowledge with me. I need to pass it. So ask whatever you yeah. want. And I was like, oh, yeah, we need to talk more. Uh, Cause he, he is, you know, he's, he's very, very smart and very savvy in the game and he's been playing it a long time. So sure. I, I love that people yeah. are like that. He's an interesting story. I, I remember when I got this booth and across the way was Larry with a hundred people sitting there. I mean, literally a hundred feet away. And he told, he knew me. Right. So before the show, he says, What's those? I said, what? Those can't be pompano rigs. They have these big boppers on them. Nobody <laughs> uses big boppers. <laughs> Are you crazy? I said, when I fished with you, you lost 49 to 38. I was fishing with that. <laughs> oh, you were. I watched you like a, you know, a hawk. And I said, oh, well. And what are those? I said, it's Tommy Farmer rods. He says, Oh, goodness, plastic. Oh. <laughs> so he, walks, he proceeds across the way, and and he's, he's, he's got everybody pulling fish out of the cooler, sliced sand fleas on coquina sand, kind of chilled, and he's got t- tackle everywhere. And he brings out his, uh, it's not even a lamb, it was a mud hole e-gator plank. It's like, whatever, $80, and he was getting... Nice money for it. Actually, towards 300 and so on and so forth. He, and he sold a lot. And he says, you got to watch out for those sticks. When I mean, you got a two-piece stick, I'm going, hey, uh, my friend's in the booth. says, your friend over there said a two-piece stick. They don't hold up, brothers and sisters. They don't hold I was like, I was at a bad church. What is this? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Well, being bigger than him, I went over there after he finished, and I said, were you referring to my two-piece sticks? And Murphy was with them, and she said, be honest, Larry, you were. <laughs> <laughs> We've had some great times. I love uh, Larry to death. She was the English professor, and he was a maintenance guy. He had a butch haircut for all his life. Really? How about that? Yeah. And now he's Did got a picture. Was, no, I couldn't because he's got yeah. flowing perfect hair now. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> hair to die for, for in your 70s to hide your face, you know, that kind of stuff. <laughs> it's just, it's I'm just ready sunscreen. for your next question. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, we've been on a good one here. Um, all right, so I'll, I'll, here you go. An easy one. Nice and fun. Do you have a favorite setup? Actually... Uh, my favorite setup is a Optios the Fury 400, a okay. shorter nanotechnology. 
Uh, the rating is an IM12, which is an intermodulus rating that I wrote in uh, uh, a titled, what was it called? Casting Over the Horizon. I wrote that for Florida Sport Fishing. And it was in reference to Tommy Farmer rods and uh, how it loads and all that. But each, like Loomis, St. Croix, every good carbon matrix has a rating that's more Euro, Africa, New Zealand. Oh, what's the rating of that uh, chap? That was that was really rogue, wasn't it? But <laughs> Spot on, sir. Spot on. Yeah. <laughs> Jawhead really good with dialect. Oh, yeah. They're going to be well know what's coming. <laughs> I like big words. Big words. <laughs> So so anyway, I um, I even forgot my train of thought. That's it was, all right. it was, You're talking about the IM12. Yeah. Uh, so some are more brittle. Some are different matrices. Some have better, a little bit of weave showing. Uh, if it's a breakaway, you can see the weave. And, and the more refined it is, it's like pixels on a good TV. You could read the blank and tell it's a really good one. If you've been around this and... Tommy and Joe Moore from Oculus has taught you all of this stuff. But uh, the Fury is a three-piece rod. Um, and I've got an Oculus 656 uh, S-Line stainless steel gear on it. I have the green, so it matches because Joe Moore had it manufactured the reel through Oculus to be the same shamrock green as that. I'm kind of a funky Yugoslav-Austrian guy with an Irish rod. <laughs> Hey, at least you got it's... something Irish out of it. Yes, yes, <laughs> and they're white as a feather. And I they said, are. we sold nine. We sold. Uh, well, Joe said I I I sold ninety. And I sold fifteen Gen two. So I just sold three yesterday. Um, and biggest year. Um, we have broken a hundred before, but we we because of price point, we're at one thirty, hundred and thirty rods. Yeah. Yeah, I got the so, 400. You know, it, it, the 400 is a beautiful rod. It, it's shockingly light for its size. How about the price? I got it for free. I want it. So I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> that was my that was my one lottery ticket for the year, man. I was like, I can't win anything else because this is amazing. So I'm good. <laughs> Do you know I haven't won anything free, but I sure have participated in <laughs> giving it away. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Sad, sadly, I understand that. Of all, of all the giveaway I've done this year versus winning, I mean, I, I, I'm definitely on the other side of this. It's been nice being the exactly. middle guy. Like, hey, you want to give stuff? Yeah, all right, I'll mail it for yeah. you. <laughs> exactly, exactly. Yeah, yeah. All right, so the hey, Can I go an interesting conversation? Oh, okay, Akios? No, no, yes. you, you were already on a train. I heard that train getting on the station. Can you give me a what? Where, where are you going? Oh, I wanted to talk about, uh, I talked to Joe Moore. I wanted to... Uh, Talk about the history of Sputniks. Yeah, send and, it. And uh, is that okay? Yeah, absolutely. Uh, hey, I'm on your time, man. I, Whatever you want. I was, I was kind of shocked. I, I Googled up Sputniks long distance casting the history. There was nothing. Really? Unless you had names. Oh. Yeah, I mean, for you, you're a Googleologist. I'm not. <laughs> <laughs> I always, when in doubt, ask Gunny Google. I would never have a problem with it. <laughs> So I said, uh, when was the first U.S. casting championship? He said, um, 1984. He said it was televised. And I said, what? He said, yeah, there was only five gentlemen that were invited. And do you know, Joseph, you know Ron Harris? I said, oh, yeah. I actually have talked to him a couple of times and Peter Thane, two ex-champions. And he's still alive. In fact, Joe Moore and Ron and all the legends get together or speak a lot, whether they're in New Zealand or whatever. Roger Mortimer, former champion fish pompano with me. And uh, anyway, so Ron Harris cast 651 feet with an Abu Garcia. Uh, I think there was no lead or anything, no magnets or anything, but he had a, and he had a, uh, let's see, he had a Ziflex rod, which is like considered, you know, and these guys had their rods just like Tommy Farmer. They went to China and had them manufactured to their specs. That's okay. how intricate it is. Um, and of all places, they held it at a desert in Arizona. 
Yeah. Dry to air. maximize the distance. Yeah, dry air and altitude. <laughs> so I said, all right, so here's my real question. I said, did they, because I knew that they used wireless Sputniks in the, you know, in the last 15 years for long casting. He said, did they have those back then? He says, sure. I said, really? He said, yeah. He says, the beach bomb. He says, do you know what, um, let's see. Is it ACA? That's the American Casting Association, or the DCA, Distance Casting Association. Google it up. That's the name of the mold. No kidding. And a it's beach a bomb. two-piece mold, a beach bomb. It's a, a football that's elongated, and it looks like the elliptical, which is longer. And, and then in 1986, Joe Moore took over all long distance casting championship in the US. Oh wow. That's what kind of legend he is. And in nineteen eighty eight a guy named Ron Riley in Delaware came to Joe's shop and brought him or to his house and bought him Sputniks, the first ones he'd ever seen were in nineteen eighty eight. Okay. Pretty cool stuff. Yeah it is. Hey, it's got a history. So, so there you go. Well, we, we sell a lot of them. I mean, we have 37 shops. And uh, um, oddly enough, if you get on eBay, there are no short tail sinkers. So that's been my survival mode. And uh, I sell long tails and all that. But um, it's not price point. It's just I don't see that much of a need. And like in Out of Banks, I asked Joe, I said, what do you got for Sputniks? I said, I've talked to 12 tackle shops and none of them. He says, do we use pyramids? You know, we're men. It's <laughs> six to 12 ounces or nothing. <laughs> you got to have 50-pound waders. <laughs> that's a whole different Winter fishery. everything. That, but that's it a is. whole different fishery right there in itself. So yeah. I, I, I can yeah. understand that, not to mention their rocks. Oh. Oh, you, you, brought no, up some, you brought up something, and I got to back you up here because we're, we're, we're at sure. four to seven minutes. And, hey, if you haven't done your bait checks yet, you should have done it by now. I'm just letting you know. You should have checked your bait. If you haven't got a bite yet, and you're out of the beach listening you, to this, are you you're talking to the client? Oh, okay, I see. Yeah, All right. or or I'm you? I mean, I didn't I'm, think you'd be fishing right now. I figure you're still at the house. <laughs> I'm looking at eight uh, eight rods right now in the patio, locked up. So. Oh, there you go. Um, <laughs> go ahead. You've been I'm doing ready. you've been doing a lot of seminars lately, though, uh, and you yes. you you've been pushing up on that a little bit more. Well, why do you feel that a seminar is so crucial for people to attend? Well. Gosh, there's so many reasons. You do the same thing. Nah. We, we like me asking you. <laughs> no, I mean, I'm, I'm, a, I'm a total, I mean, for lack of better terms, I don't think I have to make this an explicit if I say this. I'm a total whore for knowledge. I mean, you're going to well, feed yeah. me. I'm, I'm going to surler print up all you're going to give me. Anything you're going to give me that's going to make me better, faster, stronger, and a much more, uh, oh, what's the best word here? Just a better angler. I'm going to mm-hmm. listen and I'm going to, I'm going to put it into action. I'm going to make it happen. And then if it works for me, great. If it doesn't, then I'm going to refine it to find a way that it does, or I'm going to can it off to the side, but that that's me. I feel you. That's cool. Um, my, my thing is to do in different regions and associate with the anglers and separate the, the people that are shy or whatever versus the experts. I probably know half the people in the room, Everybody knows me if there's 60 people and normally there's 20 a month, there must be something I say and write that is explicit and generous enough or teachable. Um, I am all ears to hear your, the way the question is presented um, and what it's about and not to what they think they know, just add to it. And yeah. Um, you know, I'm going to show off my floats. I'm going to show off my rigs. I'm going to show them how to adjust Sputniks, um, how to fish a Sputnik with one leg in on five to 10 miles an hour. If they choose not to use pyramids to achieve some distance, um, there's a lot of things or, you know, how to bend the wire straight out when it needs to hold better or go back to a 45. You know, you've heard my discussion of how I like as commercial guys and a lot of sporties, we like their sputniks to lay on the ground with 45 degree uh, wires, but we will pull them out straight 
And so that's why we have different length wires, some of us, and some don't. So so be it. Yeah, that's one I don't think that we'll definitely have to do another episode on um, because that's one thing that's not talked about a lot. I know I got that one from you uh, was the bending of wires a different way versus 90 degrees and 45 uh, with the holding pieces and how, how the how you want them set. Um, we could definitely go into that one because I know somebody's like, whoa, 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 wait, whoa, whoa, what are you talking about wires? What do you, what do you mean bend them different? Yes, you can bend yeah. them different. And, 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 there's, and the, there's the other thing is, you know, yeah, there is. And then the other thing is, as far as twisting and turning, there are hard bottoms that derive long tails. There are the long tails flight trajectory is truer. Um, the twisting and turning that the short tails do, um, but either or sinker, if the legs are too tight and are just not tripping, they're going to twist and turn and tumble on the bottom. Yeah. All right. Those legs, you need to spread those and click them in. There's no such thing as factory set uh, legs on a, and I'm sure everybody would concur with that, you know? Yeah. I mean, you have to set them to how you want because it doesn't matter who you get them from. Yeah, you're going to get one set. You still need to tighten them or loosen them to what your specifications are. Doesn't mean it's conducive to the conditions you're fishing in. Right. So my attraction is I get 40 minutes on a seminar and two hours later, and even after, I'm still answering. <laughs> and I may give away shirts and a print and $200 worth and get nothing out of it. Truly, it happens. Yeah. And I never call it a skunk because the eight tackle shops in that geography are selling everything I sell. The fish gum, even some of my ninja rods or Matt's pools ninja rods, which I started with him four years ago. Um, so, I mean, it's just, it, one thing leads to the other, it leads to a full website, tackle shops that need you for all different reasons. I've had orders this week for 400 jigs from Strike Zone and, you know, the pre-tied ones. Yeah. And that's a nightmare, but there's money <laughs> in it. <laughs> it's a downside to being a successful man. Uh <laughs> Sorry, <laughs> we were like, oh, we could go down this one. Where this are we is, now? <laughs> this isn't a good one to go down. <laughs> so we'll actually we'll tie it up here with these last two questions. Okay, right. um, the first one is normally my ender, but my ender is actually going to be a good one that I know is going to take us a couple minutes. But let's do this one. What advice would you give someone that is starting out surf fishing? That's a good one. All right, um, I think you do what I did and other people do and that is to go down to the beach and just watch what people are doing what they're fishing for maybe you're going to be a mackerel guy maybe you like bluefish didn't know that all this occurs and you're from you know the northeast or ohio or kansas whatever um and i i really think that you know social media um it depends on who's on the beach and how descriptive they want to be about what their agenda is. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. And we could all be mutual friends much easier than we can enemies and all of that kind of stuff. And I, that the gig is just amigos, humanity. You got nature. You want to partake. Ask questions. Um, even on gear. Hey, I, I'd advise somebody to go buy a 10, 11 foot uh pen prevail and ugly stick and uh, a pen 5000 you know you, you know and then uh, eventually they're going to see other people with gear and they'll call you just hand out cards or your number and help people because that's all they need yeah and they could be very unsuccessful for a long time and then all of a sudden gel and say hmm, I'm going to invest some more money into this sport. And they, they're they either going to fall out or they'll become, you know, constant in boat guys and get off the beach and give us space. <laughs> I don't, I don't <laughs> and, you know, it's it's not much. That, that's my take on it. Yeah, that's a good one. Help I mean, people out. That's the biggest one. You know? yeah, sit and learn and watch. I mean, it doesn't hurt to talk. All right. So my, my million dollar question, because you've been, you know, 
beyond awesome this entire time as it is. Oh, what, thank you. You were very you. welcome, sir. Don't 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 get too flattered and happy because this one's the slapper. Uh, what has been your biggest lesson? It's learned? been nice. I'll see you. Oh, you. <laughs> that's just rude. Okay, I understand. Amen. <laughs> Body of Christ. A peace in your heart. <laughs> My, Please, God, wait. accept the things I cannot change. Okay. There you go. There you go. <laughs> All right. What has been your biggest lesson learned for surf fishing? Wow. You, you can go five ways to Sunday on that. My yeah. biggest lesson learned. <sighs> but what's the one? The first one that comes to your mind of like, oh, man. Yeah, that was a good one. I go back, I go back to 1958, learning from the legend. And having another five legends in my life and so they pass away and that's where all my knowledge came from for prefrontal conditions the moon uh, where to fish how to fish it how to read the water it, it comes from those people that you initially get involved with um that's that's the lesson that i would have i mean and that's my explicit lesson um and just a glorious fish of it's just it's a beautiful fish it's an attractive fish you basically don't even want to kill the poor thing so i just love the sport i've been through five boats um i like where i'm at i really do and uh i'm sure you feel that way and so does our audience so yeah. i'm very thankful for your audience <laughs> and my audience combined and i think it's a, it's it's a cool thing. I never thought I'd go forty eight minutes. Hey, or more. Oh, I mean, hey. we're, we're only at fifty six. <laughs> <All right. laughs> yeah, and I'm okay. Well, like this is great. Oh uh, man, but I'm, there's so I mean, much more. There is, but... and that, that's one of the things that I love about this, and that, that's one of the reasons I wanted to do a podcast, especially specific to surf fishing, because I mean, how many do we see that is all you know inshore or boating or anything? You know, that nobody's like dedicated directly to. And granted, I know it puts me in a pigeonhole. I accept that. I'm fine with that. But on that same one, I'd rather be in this pigeon whole passing on whatever we can for knowledge because not all of us are going to be able to come to you know jupiter to catch one of these seminars from you or you know catch something from blake over there in uh 38 sure you know we're not going to be able to go up and, and do these things and to have a central location that's, right. that's not just youtube you know or something of that nature nothing against that i, I and we all know, if I'm, I've said it numerous times, I'm a big fan of YouTube and the YouTubers, especially for all the knowledge sure. they've passed on. But this is just another avenue for us to finally be able to have that conversation, to hear these things. So this, that if you were in a seminar, I'd be like, okay, cool. I've gotten some knowledge. But, you know, we take right. what we can when we can to make things better. So it's been fun. But I, I'm, I, like I yeah. said, I am very thankful for you. I'm, I'm thankful for these 57 minutes and 50 seconds that you've given me and everyone listening. Uh, I'm hoping that it was a good ride. It was a great ride. <laughs> in, 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 in deep respect, you're not in a pigeonhole. Um, you're greatly respected over here and anywhere I've never heard. I mean, there's nobody that can stretch out to any side of the coin where we think there's darkness. You bring light. Okay, no, um, man. and you have a way with folks. You have a, a tremendous command of the, the English language, and your mere presence and joviality and big smile and kind of bald head, jar head, it's is be it's a beautiful pronounced. head. It's beautiful. It's a beautiful <laughs> head. Do you remember asking now back in the day when they had the heads, the head, uh, the big head family? Yeah. Uh, the, yeah, they were the aliens, right? Yep, yep, yep. Chevy Chase, yep, 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 yep. Thank you, Chompers. <laughs> you remember Ciao. it. Ciao. <laughs> it's coming back. Thank you so much for this well spent hour. I loved it. It went, it was cool. It was. All right. Thank you so much. Appreciate it. Again, everybody, go ahead. You can take a look at uh, pompadorich.net, and you can find a bunch of stuff we were talking about today. You're going to be able to find those rigs. Uh, rods are on there still, too, right, Rich? Yes, sir. Yep. Akios, uh, jigs. Sputniks, fish gum, fish no. gum, fish gum. <laughs> Lots of, hey, there you go. Get the bait, get it yeah. all. You can get it all in one stop shop. Uh, there's also shirts. And are you still selling the artwork on there or did that get moved off? I uh, got 12 left out of like 50. All yeah, right. I still have it. We'll see Great how many. Christmas gift, guys. Yep, Christmas. Ladies. I'm going to have to push this one out early. So we'll get this one going yeah. out there. Uh, if you ever want to reach out to Rich, like you said, he's an open book. 
Uh, you can reach out to that's Rich right. Vidalich. That's V I D U L I C H seven 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 at hotmail dot com. Uh, you can find him a lot of times on social media. He's always around, but uh, by all means, you know, if you have questions, send them on over. You can send them through me. I'll happily refer it, or you know, reach out to him direct. We'll definitely do that. So, Rich, thank you. Really, you're welcome, sir. God <laughs> bless everybody. Have a great uh, evening, or whenever you hear this, baby. There you go. Thank you. All right, man. All right. So, ladies and gentlemen, you've spent a nice hour with us. Hopefully, you've done a couple bait checks, and uh, hopefully, you've caught some fish if you're listening to that while uh, fishing. It's always good there. Uh, again, you can find a, a lot of information from Rich and uh, go to his website. It's going to help out with a lot of those ones there. Hope you learned something good this week. I know I did, uh, and there's going to continue on with the good knowledge. So I'm going to let you finally, guys, get out of here. So, hey, you've been listening to Finding Demo Surf Fishing. Go forth. Do great things. We'll talk to you next week. And we will see you on the beach. All right, bye.